You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, and everybody here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something about sort of the gaming dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Next Step. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Alright, what if I mess up? I don't want to ruin this. It's okay to mess up, Wallace. You've never done this before. How else are you supposed to learn? Yeah, you're right. And promise me that you'll then promise me that you'll relax. I promise that I'll try. Good enough for me. But if I step on your foot, I don't want to hear you complaining. Deal. Since so I slowly started to let go. With each sway we did, I could feel all of my worries melt away. I felt so safe in his arms that everything I had worried about before almost felt silly. Just like we did before, we rocked back and forth, feet moving in clumsy unison, but this time I felt his warmth up against me, holding me tight, protecting me. For once, I'm not worrying about my next step. I'm just going with the flow, enjoying his presence. I lay my head against his chest, allowing him to take full control of my body. I'm not sure why I feel this way. How can I feel so safe with him by my side when I've never felt this way when I went around anyone else? Could it be that I'm falling in love? I mean, I've thought about it before, but I wasn't really sure if it was true. This? It has to be real. <sighs> I guess Jay is always right. I never want this feeling to end. I never want to feel this warmth leave me. But I know it will. It has to. I'm leaving tomorrow, and it could be a very long time until I see him again. Until I'm able to hold him again. He has no idea. Jay's right. Can't wait any longer. Um... Deacon? Yes? Remember when I texted you something that I had, that I had something to tell you tonight? You want to tell me right now? We can wait. No, I can't wait any longer. Okay, what's up? The... I... I'm leaving tomorrow. Oh, okay, uh, where are you going? New Honan. Wow, the city! You sure you can survive there, country boy? When will you be back? I... I don't know. You don't know, like, a week? No, D, like... A long time. But you'll be back at the end of the month, right? It wouldn't be a good idea to miss the start of school. No, D, I... Got accepted into a school in New Honan. I won't be going to... I won't be going to CCCC. What? Jay and I found an apartment down there. It's pretty close to the campus. We'll be staying there for a while. How long have you known about this? January. Oh. Okay. D, I'm sorry. I should have told you earlier. I just... Just what? Lied to me? No, well, yes, but... But what, Wallace? I, I don't know. I was scared, I guess. I'm sorry. You guess? Wallace, you knew about this for months and said nothing. You sat there lying to me for months. I've been trying to tell you, but I just couldn't find the right time. And then today, Jay told me... Wait, hold on. Jay told you to do this? It wasn't for him, were you... Were you just going to leave without saying anything? Do I really mean that little to you? No, I... You what, Wallace? You were scared? Yep. Yes! I would have been happy for you. I could have planned for this, but instead you went and did this. Did you even think about how I would feel? I... No, you didn't. You have no idea how much you mean to me, how much I care about you. But I guess the feelings weren't mutual. I, I like you... I like... I, I like you actually care that much about me. What? You heard me. How could you care that much about me if you've been ignoring me all summer? I don't know what you're talking about. Bullcrap. Don't change the subject. This is about you lying to me. Maybe I, maybe I might have told you earlier, but I could have never have got a hold of you. I'm not the only one to blame here. So now it's my fault? N no, it's not. I'm sorry. You know what, Wallace? Just go away and never come back. Just like you were planning in the first place. D, don't call me that. Where are you going? To drink. You don't drink. Why do you care? Just leave me alone. I'm sorry. I'm such an idiot. This is all my fault. I pushed away the closest friend I ever had. He has every right to hate me. I'm horrible. How I'm awful. He'll be better off without me anyways. I'm just gonna sit behind this rock and die. Wallace! Wallace, where are you? He stops for a second, waiting for me to answer, but I don't. Wallace, please answer me. I know you're here. I can smell you. Go away. There you are. Wallace, what happened? Just go away. I don't want to talk right now. Okay, well, how about I just sit then? No talking. I don't answer. I'll take that as a yes. 
Jay sits down beside me and, as promised, doesn't speak. We sit like that for what feels like an eternity before I finally decided to explain what happened. Uh, I told Deacon that... I told Deacon that we're leaving. I told Deacon that we're leaving. And? He hates me. I'm sure he doesn't hate you. Just let him cool down. He'll forgive you. I don't think so. I really messed up this time. Such a horrible person. Wallace? No, there's nothing you can say that can justify what I did. I'm awful. Case in point, just a, just, just a wonder how it took him so long to find out. You're not awful. Yes, I am. I lied to him for months. If it weren't for you, I'm not even sure I would have told him at all. You would have. You don't know that. But I do. How? Because I know you. You're a good person. Then why don't I feel like it? What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Sorry, just looking at the stars. He's silent, waiting for me to elaborate, but I don't go on. Mind if I join you? Go right ahead. I have stars for the both of us. So, do you like stars? Yeah, I guess. Do you do this often? Stargazing, I mean. Sometimes. Oh, how come I never noticed? I usually do it with D, or I guess Deacon. He is he wants to be called now. Oh, is it what you guys were doing those nights? What did you think we were doing? I don't think I don't think you want me to answer that. I think you're right. Do you know any of the Do you know any of the constellations? Not really. I only know the Big Dipper. I just think they're pretty to look at. You're not wrong. They really are a wonder. Another thing that the city won't have. <sighs> Having second thoughts about moving? No, just gonna miss home is all. I, I get what you mean. But you're telling me that you've been stargazing for years and you don't know any of the constellations? What did you two do? Not much. We just talk about life, I guess. Sometimes we would come up with our own constellations. How does that work? We would find a cluster of stars and connect the dots. And we would just come up with a story for it. Oh, okay then. How about that one up there? Jay points up straight up into the sky. What are you pointing at? Are those stars there? Don't they look like a wolf? Oh, I see it now. Yeah, you're right. It kind of does. Well, did you know that the wolf, um, had several warrants out for his arrest for six counts of arson? As he should. The entire kingdom would be lit to fire before he would be satisfied. Was he ever caught? Sadly, yes. He and his wolf boyfriend were hung before they could accomplish their goals. Well, that's sad. Well, they were gay lovers, and if media has taught me anything, it said gay people can't have happy endings. Ain't that the truth? Okay, now your turn. Alright, uh, give me a second. Okay, there. That cluster of stars just south of the North Star. Kind of looks like a lion in Ram's head. Oh, yeah, I see it. So what's the story behind those two? Well, they're obviously boyfriends. Naturally. And, um, they go to college together and are roommates. Go on. That's kind of it. I was never really good at this part. Do you usually come up with the stories? It was a wonderful story. Cute and straight to the point. Changing the subject, do you know your star sign? Star sign? Yeah, like the month that you were born in or something. Oh, yeah, that thing. Uh, I think I'm a Pisces, but I'm not really sure. Never never was really into that astrology stuff. Really? I. But I wouldn't think that it would be right up your alley. I have to get you into it sometime. Hmm. Maybe. There's a long silence that goes on for quite a while. I think about trying to break it, but I'm really not in the mood to talk at the moment. Just when I was starting to enjoy the silence, Jay speaks up again. Hey, Wallace? Yeah? Do you remember that night I came to live with you? Yes. Do you know why I had to leave my home? Vaguely, you told me about it that night, but I never really talked about it again. I didn't want to pry, so I just let it be. Well, a couple of years before before that was when I was got when I got out into my parents. They caught me with my binder on and were appalled. Second deal, water time or coffee time. All right, guys and gals, and we are back. Okay, I didn't even need a binder or anything at that point. It just made me feel comfortable when I had it on. I tried to explain to them that it wasn't what it looked like, but before I could even open my muzzle, my dad was already on top of me, ripping it off. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared that I scratched him without even thinking. With a nasty cut, too. He never looked at me the same way again. That scar on his face being a constant reminder of my terrible betrayal to them. Jay, you don't have to... Wallace, just please listen. Okay. Needless to say, they weren't too happy with me at that point. They would say, how are we going to tell our friends that our beautiful daughter was actually our son? So they... Oh... God, wow, okay. 
A bind, yeah, that's right, a binder. Sorry, y'all, I'm still recovering from being super, super fucking blitzed last night. Ugh! I just got that, okay. Oh, so Jay is trans, okay. So they hid me away, locked me in my room, and only allowed me to leave to go to school. I wasn't allowed to see my friends or anything. Not like I had any. They took me to church where they tried to pray it all away. I tried to act like it was working to stop everything and make things go back to normal. Actually, a part of me really did believe it. But the part of me that didn't believe it, the part of me that was truly me, didn't go away. It stayed in the back of my mind, lingering. I hated that part of me. I blamed that part of me for everything that went wrong. It was the reason that my parents despised me. Why well, the kids at school picked on me. Why well, I couldn't go outside to hang out with the other kids. Why well, my bedroom door was gone. And why I was going to hell. I prayed every single night to have God fix me. To make me normal so that my parents would love me again. I did that for years. So what changed? You did. Really? What did I do? Everything. You always stuck up for what was right. You showed everyone you ever met kindness even if they didn't show it back to you. You stood up for me when the other kids would pick on me. You sat by me at lunch and would talk to me. You worried about me when I, when I would show up to school late with bruises. You treated me like I was a person. I wanted to be like you. You were what I aspired to be. You made me realize that it's okay to be me, even though you didn't realize what was going on at the time. I don't think you've told me this before. I didn't want to feed that big ego of yours. Oh, like you're one to talk. What do you mean? I am the most humble person in the world. No one is more humble than yours, truly. <laughs> okay then, continue with your story, King of Humble. Where was I? Oh, right. I think that my parents could tell that their efforts in fixing me weren't working as much as they wanted, so in a last-ditch effort to heal me, they are going to send me away to one of those camps. I overheard them talking about it one night. I was so scared that I didn't know what to do. I, I felt like if they were to ship me off to that camp, then my life would end right then and there, so I just ran. I snuck out of my bedroom window and ran and ran and ran and ran like till I, could, till I couldn't see my house anymore. I didn't know what to do or where to go or who to call, so I just wandered the streets for hours, and that's when I saw some silly little otter who got lost riding his bike and couldn't find his way home. And it was almost like fate. I remember that. You ran up to me so fast that you knocked me off my bike. I thought I was being mugged or something, but then I saw that it was you and that you were sobbing. I didn't know what to do, so I just hugged you until you calmed down enough to explain what happened. I told you everything. Honestly, I was afraid that after I told you about being about me being trans that you would just hop on that bike and leave me be. But I didn't care at that point, and you didn't leave. You hugged me harder and told me that it was okay. That it was good no matter who I was and that you accepted me. I think at that moment I think that, that moment was when you became my brother. And then I came out to you not even two minutes later. We just sat there crying together for like an hour before a passerby saw us and called my parents. When they arrived, they were definitely confused to find you the strange fox boy, both for our faces covered in tears. <laughs> yeah, your parents were worried sick about you. Didn't let you bike to school ever bike to school ever again. They also granted me for a month, but I didn't regret a thing. If it weren't for that mistake, then I would never have found you, and who knows what would have happened. I tried to think about it. Probably for the best, but why are you telling me this? So what happened after that? Did Jay just not go back home? Was Jay adopted by another set of parents? Uh, what what happened? I'm curious as to as to what else happened in that story. All right, because you're a good person, Wallace, and I just wanted to let you know that. I don't know what to say. And don't say anything. Just remember that even though you may not feel like you are, you're good, and I owe you everything. Deacon will realize it, too. Just give him some time. I don't know. You weren't there. He was really hurt. I kind of was. I mean, I kind of was. You guys weren't exactly quiet. Also, Reagan and I were totally spying on you two. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silver, for going but above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our three gold tier patrons, Zeke, Toby, and Blue Wolf Alpha. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our Safe for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye